I'm going to give it a little bit of time here to get the last couple of folks joining us. Thank you for joining us again. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining the counselor series here. The teaching This is focused on teaching counseling courses, engaging your students in a virtual reality uh, remote learning. We have a question for you as we get started and as folks are joining, hopefully you'll be able to put right into the chat, what would you like to learn today? So as in a short fashion that you can, in a phrase, what would you like to learn? Please put that into the chat and we'll go ahead and begin. This information will be useful for the panelists and for all of us uh, trying to respond to what your interest is today. Thank you. Next slide. So this is the counselor conversation series that we, we've been doing. This is now, I believe, the fourth in the series uh, focused on strengthening our practice with equity in mind. And I have already mentioned the title for this session today, Teaching Counseling Courses. We have uh, put together, uh, I think, an exciting and really robust uh, conversation for you today. Uh, but before we get started, just wanted to welcome everyone. Thank you for joining uh, this uh, session today. We know it's been challenging. People are Zoom fatigued and uh, we're at the end of this year. And uh, I'm sure you're thinking about the challenges that you've gone through, but also we hope the, the hope and the opportunities that will come to us all in the new year. Um, we wish you a very safe and, and good holidays. So let's go to the next slide. We always start these uh, sessions with land acknowledgement. So let me just quickly read this. We at CACN begin this webinar by acknowledging our presence on the traditional ancestral and unceded territories of the indigenous people throughout the state of California. We, we pay our respects to the ancestors, elders, and our relations past, present, and emerging of the lands from which we all gather today. And uh, we wanna thank the UCLA American Indian Studies Association for this land acknowledgement model that we share each time. So thank you. Next slide. We are encouraging you to um, join our group, our uh, community of practice. It's called the California uh, Co Counseling Network. And uh, it's been around for a number of years and we have close to over 400 members now from throughout the state representing both community college and high school uh, counselors, as well as others that are in support, uh, support positions or in some cases, some uh, associates of the California Community Colleges or education in general. So uh, we welcome everyone to this community. It's a place to share and exchange. And especially during these times where there's so much rapid change happening, it's important to share our practice. And this uh, community is very focused on the practitioner to practitioner sharing and learning. And which is why these roundtables are so emblematic of the, of the heart and the spirit of the CACN group itself. It's free to join, there's no cost. Uh, we ask that you fill out a little form that tells us a little bit about you as you begin your journey with us. And we look forward to that you will be joining us. There is an opt-in uh, way for you to join quickly. Um, so we're affording you a faster way to join if you would like, if you're not currently on the CACN Basecamp group. I uh, believe it's in the chat room already. So you can check that out. We'll talk, we'll come back at the end and talk a little bit more about the CACN as well and give another opportunity for folks that haven't joined to join. Uh, we're very pleased with the turnout so far. People have been joining at each stage of our CACN uh, roundtables that we've been having. Next slide, please. Wanted to acknowledge the planning team. This is the group here of uh, six. There's actually a whole number of folks that have been helping, but these in particular have been very engaged in the actual production and the, and the creation of the uh, roundtable series. I wanna thank them, Robert, Heather, Lupe, Patricia, Derek, and Christina, of course. Uh, thank you all for your wonderful work. It's so, so um, wonderful to see each of these grow and develop, and uh, we look forward to the continuing these few more that we have on the calendar. So thank you again, and want to encourage everyone as you go, as you're learning and, and sharing in this uh, roundtable today and any others, please uh, 
put in the chat your your thoughts, reactions. We do have a way we hope to collect from you your thoughts and reactions as well at the end. But anytime throughout the uh, session, please feel free to uh, engage us on the chat. Please, next slide, please. This is the purpose of these roundtable series. We really wanted to take a different approach and the group that you saw earlier, the planning team, as well as others that contributed to the idea that the, it, Zoom fatigue is real and we wanted to move away from the constant barrage of just Google slides or PowerPoint slides and the constant talk. So we wanted to really focus on a conversation, as I said earlier, CACN is very focused on the practitioner, practitioner learning. So it's really about us getting out of the way and then moving forward. So we're, we're happy that this session is now happening and look forward to our next sessions that are coming up. So the three main purposes and the why for these sessions are to connect counselors across the community college system. And I would also include high schools because we do have some high school folks joining us to engage in student-centered conversation, which is all about the improvements that need to be made. And then lastly, to share strategies and practices that help inform all of us to improve student success. On the, on the left-hand side, you see the calendar series of, uh, of other events that are coming up in February and April. We'll talk more about that at the end. I have the pleasure of introducing our facilitator for this session today. Um, next slide is Heather Oshiro from Chabot College, and she's graciously been not only helping with this one, but really as a part of the planning team. Heather, thank you so much for all your great work. Please take it away. Thank you, Louise. Good, good morning. I guess I should say good afternoon, everyone. We are officially in the afternoon and, and happy December. So glad that you're all with us. Um, you know, the, the, actually, I have to admit that the reason we're doing this today was selfishly for me because I was teaching a dual enrollment career and educational planning course to a group of high school students in um, the spring of 2020 when the world fell apart. And I had to quickly go from teaching my in-person, on-campus, very experiential, discussion-based course, and I had to turn it online. And I've never taught in a course online. And I quite frankly was freaking out and just really, really stumped and stressed. Um, and so I, in talking with the planning team, I thought that other counselors may be in various stages of stress and alarm around how we teach our courses online. And some of our colleagues have been doing it for a long time. So I'm really hopeful that this um, session today um, will be helpful for all of us in just learning new ideas and, and sharing um, across. And what a great opportunity to share with colleagues all over the state um, when we can't even get out of our own homes. So I'm just so grateful that you're all here with us today. Um, so the first thing that we like to do, um, we, we're going to start off with the student panel. We have four students, I believe, with us today. Um, Liliana Mendez Pascual from Santa Monica College. We have Sarah Corral from Chabot College. Juliana Nava from Chabot College. And Cristela Marcias from Fullerton College. And so we invited some students to share with us their experiences with online um, learning, online instruction, and to basically give us, you know, right from, you know, quote unquote, like the horse's mouth, right? Right from the students to hear directly from them. And so I'm gonna invite them to join us in a little bit of a discussion. I do have some questions for them that I'll ask, but basically it's sort of to get to the overriding question for us is how can teaching online be improved so that it's more beneficial to students? So thank you students so much for joining us. We can get, oh, we are all on a share screen, great. So I am going to um, start off by asking, and any of the students can join in um, to, to answer, so feel free, any of you. Um, the first question is, what is it like for you to learn online? What has it been like for you? I guess I can start if, uh... Please. oh, actually, no, Liliana, you go ahead, go ahead. Um, so I, I'm currently attending Santa Monica College, and I actually got the um, opportunity to feel a sense of community once we were on campus. So going through the pandemic and having to be virtual, um, kind of, it did impact my learning, I guess, um, because I didn't have that sense of reaching out to my um, Sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. Um, I didn't have um, 
that chance to really like connect with my peers in my classes. I have tried to connect with some of my peers through discussion posts, which I now very much appreciate because it's, it is my only way of communicating, communicating with them besides Canvas messages. And I really only use Canvas messages to um, ask any questions the professor may not be able to answer at that time. And um, I've also been able to join committees with this online experience. So it has impacted me in a way, but it hasn't impacted me as much because I, I still feel that sense of community at Santa Monica College. And um, I, I've grown really close with certain counselors and I'm also in the transfer process. So I have really been connecting with multiple counselors during this time. Thank you, Liliana. Sarah, did you wanna jump in? I was just gonna say for me as an older student transitioning into online learning, was a little bit different because I hadn't done it before. Um, so I've really had to learn a little bit about time management and kind of monitoring my time because it does take up a lot of time compared to when you have an in-person class, you go and you know what to expect. But when you have an online class, you have to actually dedicate the time for that. And it's easy to get off track. But you really have to be checking in every day and making sure there's no updates or else you might fall a little bit behind. Thank you. Anybody else want to jump in? Um, for my first year, it's been, I mean, it's been, it's been hard, but I feel like I've gotten help from the counselors a lot. And that's really what's been my guiding point. It's really helped me a lot with Miss Sadie. She's helped me so much. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So you were a brand new student uh, this year, Juliana, straight yeah, out of high school? Yeah, first year. So it's been kind of hard transitioning, but I think it's been good overall, yeah. Great, thank you. Is Cristela able to be with us right now? I'm not sure if she I, was able to. Yeah, I don't think she was able to join. Okay, thank you. So if you, you. you join, just let me know and I can go ahead and spotlight you. Okay, great. So um, those are, you know, so it sounds like you guys have all, you ladies, you guys, I always say guys, but ladies um, have all, you know, been sort of, you know, transitioning pretty well into the online learning environment and noting some of the, the struggles. Um, what do you feel keeps you engaged? What do your instructors do now that you're in all online courses to help you stay engaged in the class? Anybody, anybody can go. I'm sorry, do you want to go? No, it's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, so like I said previously, I do think discussion po posts are a big part of online learning. I mean, it's the only way I get to interact um, with my fellow classmates. And then if it's through a Zoom class, I really try to have my camera on for the most part. So I just really like seeing like everyone's faces. It's, it's really encouraging to keep on going, especially through these difficult times and just be able to connect with like my fellow classmates and my professors and just ask questions throughout if I have any problem learning a concept in the class. Thank you, Juliana or Sarah, do you have anything to add? What keeps you engaged? I feel like the discussions have also helped me keep engaged with a lot of my friends and the students and everything. But one thing was that there's in one of my classes, I have a gr group where we get together every week. So I feel like that's helped a lot. Groups are really a big thing and because you get to engage with them and everything. Yeah, so the groups have helped a lot. Thanks. Can I, uh... I totally agree, you know, contacting your fellow students and contacting your professors whenever you have questions, even small questions. Not, it's hard, like you feel like, oh, this is just a little thing. Maybe it doesn't matter, but maybe it does matter, you know, and just reaching out and um, usually messaging through Canvas. And the cameras being on is huge. Like I've been in classes where nobody has their camera on and you feel very disconnected. And I understand why I know that, you know, people don't have the bandwidth you know, in their internet to 
necessarily keep their camera on all the time, but maybe they could at least upload a picture of themselves. So you feel like you're in a room with people versus just um, names, because it does create sort of a community uh, feel. And keeping the chat open too in the class is nice so that you can talk to your fellow students during class. Thank you. Um, what, so you, you mentioned, you know, communication um, with other students and with the instructor. And so my question for you is, how do you like to be reached by instructors, counselors, other college staff? I mean, I'm aware that you all are being just overly bombarded with emails, I would imagine, right? Like every Canvas notification fills up your inbox, every instructor, you know, with every assignment and every time we change something in Canvas, you get a new email notification probably. So what do you feel like is the best way for um, your instructors and counselors and other folks on campus to really effectively communicate with you if there's something to reach out to you about? Um, so I um, usually prefer email. I, I, I'm constantly checking it since I have it synced up to my phone, but if it is a question that I can't really get through on email, then I do um, go to my professor's office hours if they're available and if not I will also email them to set up a time when they're available to just answer questions and also through Zoom it's more of a feeling I guess that you can get as if it were to be an in-person class and it's just like seeing their face is also really welcoming. Thank you. Office hours are really good just to see the professor and talk to other students. Um, my inbox and my email can sometimes get very full, like you mentioned. So just checking Canvas daily for messages is good. And also, I mean, honestly, um, students do prefer texting, if anything. So even like if your campus doesn't offer sort of any kind of service for that, you could always sign up through remind.com if you get your students to um, opt into that and then you can text them through that app. Uh, maybe not confidential information, but sort of general information. Thank you. I'm Julia. on the same page, sorry. No, go ahead, please. I'm on the same page um, as them. I feel like texting is a big one too. I mean, sometimes it's hard to go through all the messages to see you know, to keep up with them. But I feel like Canvas also has been a big help. They've, um, a lot of my professors have answered back on there. And yeah. Great, thanks. Um, one quick thing to just ask you all, um, do you ha is there anything special that any of your instructors have done to make you feel welcome in, in the online environment? Anything specific you can share with our participants? Um, so it's not um, welcoming, it's more of the professor being understanding um, of the circumstances that we're going through. Um, so two of my professors have allowed me to turn in work late um, up until the end of the semester, which is coming up um, in two weeks. Um, but I think that has been very beneficial to students as a lot of students are, are working now during this time. So I just think um, a professor being really understanding is like key to students engaging. Thank you. Sarah or Juliana, do you have anything to add? I was just gonna say, I totally agree. That flexibility is huge. Um, you know, something comes up like I was in a public speaking class and someone had to miss their time spot for their public speaking class, but the professor let them make it, make it up at the next class. And just understanding that we are in way different circumstances now than we ever have been before um, makes a big difference. Thank you. I totally agree. Um, it's It's been hard through everything, you know, trying to keep track, but having them there to be like, everything's gonna be okay. And your works, if you have a hard time, we're gonna be there for you. And um, yeah, it's just, it's been, yeah, having them be there for you and having like them feel, how do I explain this? Making you feel confident that things are gonna be okay at the end, you know, like with work and everything. I totally agree with the girls. Thanks. Uh, Christina, do we have any other questions from the participants in the chat that we wanna ask our students? Um, 
Yeah, we do. We actually have a question based on what Juliana just said. You mentioned um, you feeling confident moving on to the next semester, but that question is also posed for everyone else. Um, given everything that's happening, do they do you all ladies feel confident going into the spring semester? So the question for our students are, do you feel confident moving into spring, or excuse me, yeah, spring 2021? Yes. Like I said, I do feel confident because I've learned so much throughout this whole first semester. It's been tough, but you learn as you go. So I feel like it's been tough, but yeah, it's been good. I think we have about one minute left for, of our wonderful student panel. Are there any other burning questions to ask our students right now before we move on into our breakouts discussions? We did have one other question. Um, this was geared towards Juliana as well, but if anyone else wants to respond, um, if, did your professor set up the groups or did you as a student set them up? So you were referring to um, your groups, talking to them, to students and talking about the discussion in class. Um, the professor actually set up the groups and we didn't know who was going to be in the group, but it's been really beneficial to everyone. Like we have, um, we go on weekly, so we get to catch up on like our um, assignments and everything together in a group project. So it's been, it's been really good for everybody. Anything else, Sarah or Liliana to add? And what's, um, how you, you know, did the instructors set up the groups? How you feel about going into spring? I do know that in one of my classes, one of my classmates set up something called a Discord group. I don't even honestly know what that was, but I remember reading about it in the chat. So some students do set up their own groups, but I do feel confident going into the spring quarter now. I think I might lessen my pace because I was feeling like, oh, I gotta get all this done. I gotta go really fast. And it's very easy to get very tired doing that. So I'm gonna kind of calm down about that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, All so, right. Go ahead, Liliana. Yeah, we have what we have a little bit, just a second more. I want to hear what you have to say. Um, so I didn't have the opportunity um, to join a group, and I guess I also didn't make the effort either. Um, I do feel a little stressed for my spring semester as I am taking 19 units, and it will be my last semester there. Um, <laughs> so I'm not excited for the stress I'm I'm going to get, but I am excited to just go on and move on with my journey as a transfer student. Wow, that is impressive. Well, I am wishing you guys all the best. Um, thanks for hanging out with us um, as long as you can. Um, and I'm sure there'll be some more questions. It looks like there were a lot of really rich questions in the chat. So if you can hang with us through the rest of this session, as long as you can, I'm sure we'll be able to have some more questions for you. Um, if we can move on to the next slide, please. All right, we are going, you know, part of the reason, and as Luis mentioned earlier, part of the reason we're doing this as a, as a conversation is, is to allow us to interact with each other. And, and anybody who knows me knows I'm a real believer in that cross-pollination and always wanting to continue to build community. So we wanna give you about 10 minutes in a breakout session, um, just sort of randomly assigned, um, giving you some time to talk with each other. So when you get to your breakout room, if you could please just quickly introduce yourself, who you are and what, what campus you're from, um, maybe you know your role, if you have a specific role, and then what was your takeaway from what you just heard from our amazing students? And um, also thinking about moving into the next segment of our um, panel um, discussion today will be, what questions do you have for our counseling practitioner panelists? So just kind of whipping around in the discussion room sort of thinking about what our students shared and thinking about maybe what you're gonna be listening for going forward this morning or this afternoon. So I think uh, we'll go into breakout rooms and then we'll come back. So here's, what are we doing here, Lupe? Um, 
Oh, sorry. Um, as we're all coming back in from our breakout discussions, if you have any any thoughts, any takeaways, any any comments, questions to share, um, please please continue using the chat. It's been really great to see what everybody's thinking. Um, please continue with that. Okay, we're going to move into the second part of our session, and I'd like to introduce um, our guest panelists today, our, our counseling practitioner panelists today. We have Justin Wembis. He's a counseling faculty instructor at, um, and he works with Puente, and he's at Diablo Valley College. We have Sadie Ashraf, who is, um, whoa, where'd they go? There we go. We have Sadie Ashraf, who's my great colleague at Chabot College. Um, she is a counselor in general counseling. She also is a mental health counselor, um, and she teaches classes online at Chabot College. We have Dr. Queen Peterson, a counseling faculty um, and I'm involved with Emoja at Fullerton College. And then we have Jenna Gaussman. She's a career counselor and an instructor at Santa Monica College. So I just wanna thank all of our panelists for being here today. You guys are so amazing. I'm looking forward to hearing everything you have to say. Um, and just for the group, um, as we're going through, if we could go to the next slide, please. Um, we're gonna ask some, some overall questions. Um, these are some of the questions that we'll be asking the panelists and we'll be entertaining your questions in the chat as well. So I would like to um, move to the next slide so I can share um, how this is a model of how is what's a good way for you all to share your questions or comments. So add them in the chat. And if you have a question in sp specifically for one of the panelists, something they said, um, you know, piqued your interest and you have a question for them, if you could put, for example, like Jenna, how do you, whatever. So you can just, you know, name the person that you're interested in, in hearing from. Um, and then also, um, I know they'll be watching the chat as well. So you may get some answers um, in the chat. And then periodically, I'll ask Christina to also let us know if there are questions for our panelists. Okay. All right. So we're going to move to the first question that we have. Um, the first question is, please share some of the challenges opportunities and strengths of teaching online. And I'm going to invite Sadie to open this discussion for us, please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, teaching online, like the things that come to my mind are like, how do I engage students, right? Like kind of what we were talking about from the student panel is how do we create commun community within a classroom, even if it is online, um, making it interactive, you know, making it accessible. Um, we having it within our equity framework, thinking about the mental health of our students and their well-being. Um, there's just so much that goes into uh, creating a teaching online environment, um, including thinking about like, are we offering our classes synchronously or are we doing it asynchronously? Because that can also vary in how we engage. Um, and connecting students to the relevance of what they're learning, right? So creating meaning and um, some connection with each other and in the classroom, but also to the learning material. So like, what's the purpose of learning this and what, how are you gonna apply it in your life? So there's so many components to online teaching, um, but I would say coming back to the question here, I would say a strength for teaching online is that it gives an opportunity within Canvas or whatever, you know, LMS, the learning platform that you're using is to organize. Like you can really like take time to organize your materials and um, bring that connection to students through resources about things that are happening on campus, whether it's through announcements or utilizing the discussion board. Um, you can, you know, utilize videos or whatnot to like kind of help foster that um, more of like that human connection. Um, so the opportunity is that there's endless webinars, right? Like there's just so much out there um, to learn. Um, and then within that, I guess the strength and challenge is, it's the time, it's the time to organize, it's the time to learn. It's like, we wanna be responsive to our students. And so we might have apps on our phone and checking our emails and, but then where's our own self-care? Like, where do we um, not only talk about mental health and well-being for our students, but also for ourselves, right? Because it's just, we wanna be responsive um, and continually learn and connect, but then 
how do we also have like that, maintain that flexibility of um, like being on our phones or on the computer and being responsive at any point, but then like take care of ourselves. Um, so I, I would say those are the, both the strengths, challenges and opportunities, but um, I'd love to hear from the other panelists as well, you know, especially around self-care or, or any other aspects of strengths and opportunities and challenges. Yeah, Justin. Oh yeah, I got one. So hi everyone, uh, it's Justin Wembes from Diablo Valley College. I would say uh, one of the biggest challenges, and if you're teaching, you probably totally agree with me on this, is if you're teaching, you see a lot of, you see a lot of blank screens. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me personally, I don't require them to have their video on because I know they're in situations where, you know, I have students in my Puente class who are taking care of their siblings. I had a student who was Zooming from their closet and so I know they're in situations where they don't want that scene um, for, for the entire class, but I have, so that was a challenge, but also an opportunity where, you know, first day I showed the students how to create a, a background, um, how to put a picture. So like if I stop my video right now, there's a picture of me and my son. And I kind of made it, um, so what I did is I wanted students to look forward to each class. And so whatever was the theme of the class, uh, students would, so let's say if I had a sports theme, then students would put up a picture of their favorite sports team or them wearing sports gear. And so we would do something like that. So it's tailored to the class. And so I felt like students looked forward to it. And, um, and then I also wanted just to address too, like when we're in person, uh, you know, we could tell students, we could give them reminders and send emails and so on. But uh, I, it, I don't know if you all know about Remind app. And so I use Remind where all the students are in my uh, group text and I could just send out one text to remind them of a quiz, something that's due in class or of an event. And they really appreciate that because it's something that they could quickly um, access. I have a million other things to share, but I got to... I think as a counselor, sometimes you're like, oh, I got the spotlight. Like, let me just talk and talk and talk. So I do want other, uh, others to share as well. Thanks, Justin. Anybody else have anything to add to? Sure. To I'd like to, yeah, I'm Jenna Gausman from Santa Monica College, and I'm on the career side of the, of the fence, so to speak. So I teach career planning. Um, and, you know, I mean, as far as a challenge, it was engagement. And it's just engagement of the students and keeping them motivated and keeping them, you know, showing up each week, right? And I'm, ve I'm very, at SMC, I'm not sure what the other colleges are doing, but they gave all of us that were on ground the opportunity to decide if we wanted to do asynchronous or synchronous. They did not require us. They let us as instructors and faculty to decide. So I was online in spring and it did, not, it did not work for me as an instructor. So I encourage you, talking about Sadie's self-care, figure out what works for you. Because if it's working for you as an instructor and a counselor, it's going to work then better for your students. So as soon as I figured out that I needed to be synchronous and you know, show up for me or not, you know, and everyone's like, well, hopefully your class will fill. And I've had full classes um, the, ever since um, you know, this fall and going into spring. So, and guess what? It's the synchronous. Um, my, I don't know if it's an opportunity. Um, you know, it's just, I pretend like I'm in class. I dress like I'm in class. I pretend I'm in class. I pretend we are at SMC's campus in the student services building, classroom 212. And, and it's, it's actually worked. My students won't leave my Zoom meeting, <laughs> my Zoom classroom. Um, so I agree with just being as authentic as possible and doing what works best for you. Um, the other challenges, I think we would all agree, it's learning all of these new technologies crazy. I think I've learned five new systems in the past, um, you know, six, eight months and the toggling as a professor and the students are so sweet. They're just like, just, it's okay, Jenna. It's okay. You got this. Hey, Jenna, this is how you can turn that page. And, you know, I think the students love to know that you're, that they love to help. They, you don't have to know everything. I think that's a big thing. Um, one thing I implemented that was an opportunity is I never had my students meet with me one-on-one. -on -one. And I said, oh my gosh, I am not getting to know them because we're on Zoom calls. And so I do require, because I do carry a counseling load as well. So they have to make a one-on-one -on -one 30 minute appointment with me. And that has been unbelievably successful. So 
yeah. I have more to say too, like Justin, but I'll, I'll stop there. <laughs> I want to hear from Queen. <laughs> All right. So one of the things that I think this uh, opportunity was for opportunities for all of us to work together. And I mean, what I mean about that is our administrators, all of our faculty, our classified, you know, we all came together really, really quickly to get up and running so that we can help the students be successful. So it was a matter of days, we was practically fully online, doing everything that we could to, to make sure that we retain our students in, in, the, in our classrooms. And so I think that was one of the opportunities for everyone to just work together collaboratively. So I agree. Thank you. Um, just, just on this question, I'm, I'm curious, you know, some of you have mentioned asynchronous and synchronous, and I just wanted to follow up. Um, are there any key, anything that you can share that sort of touches on the differences and maybe what you've done or what you wonder or, or any, any, you know, tidbits for our participants around that? But I actually want to jump in and tell me and tell you what my students have told me about it and that many of them have loved the, the flexibility of asynchronous and being able to jump onto the classes when they can. And what, what I'm hearing from a lot of them, uh, Liliana, actually, we talked about it before. She actually did say, she goes, Jen, I like asynchronous 100% so that I have that flexibility. But most of my students are, as they're coming into spring, they're kind of going, I want half synchronous and I want half asynchronous. Um, because I need to be engaged, I need to see people, um, and uh, so that's that's what I'm hearing from the students. And as a professor, I, as you just heard, I I do what works for me. So I'm much hap I'm a much happier camper than being asynchronous. I'm asynchronous as well, but um, I do see my students face to face because I like to do my since it's my classes. I've been teaching online for about eight years, and so all of my classes have been totally online. But what I like to do is I have to do the educational plans. And so I do face-to-face. -face. And then of course those virtual uh, office hours as well. Yeah, similarly, I teach asynchronously, but like counseling uh, appointments, like, you know, Juliana actually, she was, she was one of my students and she reached out with a group of students. And she was like, I know it's really hard to get a counseling appointment. Can my friends and I join you all together? And I'm like, that's brilliant. It's a great use of my time. You guys connect with each other and I don't have to, you know, uh, we can still do the individual plans like one-on-one, -on -one, but then some of the information that's more broad um, to like pre-nursing students or whatnot, we could cover together and they learn from asking each other questions as well. So she actually initiated it and now I'm reaching out to my other uh, classes and asking um, students to actually consider more of a group counseling approach, which is outside of the class. And I'll just quickly share that I'm, I'm synchronous and um, I, the challenge has been, how do I get my students to feel motivated to want to come to the Zoom session? And I think what's really helped that I've gotten feedback from is uh, each lesson having a tailored theme. And I'll just give you a quick example. I normally teach, I think we all may teach growth mindset in our counseling classes. Uh, I don't call mine growth mindset. I call it Mamba, Mamba Sita mentality. So it's a whole lecture about Kobe Bryant and sort of his Mamba mentality. And so I've tailored that sort of mindset. And instead of talking about growth mindset, I'm literally talking about the same thing, but I'm using something that they could resonate with. Uh, and that's also relevant and, and you know, Unfortunately, it was, it was tragic earlier this year, but something that they could remember. And so I, I, it's pushed me to get really creative with the tailored themes. Thanks. Um, Christina, do we have any questions um, left on this first question? And we have a couple of minutes left. Yeah. Any questions from the chat? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I actually think this Lupe um, asked for Justin and Queen for your learning communities. How have you been able to maintain a sense of program connection? Uh, for me, uh, right now, I'm not in a learning communities. I'm not quite sure. Maybe Justin is a, a, in a learning community. Are you talking about learning community where your classes are connected to other classes? 
I think it's like special programs like Emojo. Emoja, I'm just a part-time counselor for the Emoja program. So I'm not teaching those Emoja classes in a linked capacity. So I don't teach classes for Emoja. I, I'm just a counselor for Emoja. Um, uh, El Camino, the way how we do it, we are a learning community. Um, some assignments are collaborated with amongst the instructors. So at least one or two in two classes at least. Um, but then we also have what we care, what we call a safe space, a Mosier safe space. We host it every Thursdays and just give the students like at least an hour to come on and come and talk about things that's going on personally with them or any other issues that they may have that they haven't quite had a chance to come and make appointments with us. We open it up for every Thursdays for the semester. So we're going to continue that again in spring. And then we host different events with the health center or with other support, I'm sorry, with other services on campus through Zoom, unfortunately, and of course, to uh, have the students and require them to at least go to three of them. So one financial aid, one mental health, and then one academic. So we try to keep them communicating that way and engage that way. Um, I'll, I'll, for SMC, this is a really quick answer. Um, basically, like our Black Collegians and our Adelante program and our STEM program, they actually, we, we fold them under our clubs. So. So then the clubs have um, weekly meetings during fall and spring. Great I'll, question though. This is a great question. I'll share, uh, cause I'm currently in uh, one of the co-coordinators of the Puente program at DVC. So we, uh, all the events we would have done in person, we actually did all of them virtual. So we told the students from the beginning, we, it took a lot of planning. So a lot of planning over summer and throughout the semester, but uh, we told the students, you know, we're gonna focus on what we have control of and we're gonna make sure that you can still have these events even though it's virtual. So we did a author visit where um, the book they're reading their English course, we had the author visit and we did a webinar. Um, we did virtual presentation and tours of different UCs and Cal State universities. Normally we would have been on a bus ride and go visit in person, <laughs> but we still did it. Uh, we did Noche de Familia where they could bring on their parents and then we talked to their parents and just make reassure them that even though we're in this pandemic and things are different, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're gonna be here to support your students no matter what and just really showcase how much we cared. And so far, you know, they've enjoyed the event and we've recorded the events for those students who do have work and cannot make it so that they could still access, you know, what went on. So that's what we've done in Puente um, at DVC. Thank you so much. Those are some great tips. Um, we are going to move on to the second question for our, our panelists. Um, the second question is, what specific approach, strategies, and tools have you adopted as you moved online? And um, I'm going to invite Queen to open up for us, please. OK, thank you so much. OK, so I mean, there's so many strategies out there that that we can use, but uh, specifically what I've used is two weeks, starting two weeks prior to my class starting, I send out a welcome um, letter. And in that welcome letter, I do a have a couple of things in there. I like to poll the students to find out what their interests are and their expectations for the course. I also put in there our anti-racist statement that kind of mirrors the statement of our campus. And then the week before I sent out another letter just to generate some things. And there I've learned to put in my picture, put in the pronouns next to my name. And I seen the students seem to enjoy it because every student now when they log in, they have their pronouns. Um, there is the really the social interaction piece that you know everybody's been talking about anyway. For example, um, virtual office hours, uh, the breakout groups, um, and then to um, I have a dedicated time at the very start of class, like right before the class officially starts, that I send out an email to say I'm going to be in the chat at this time. Please come in, introduce yourself to me. And then we can talk and have dialogue and that they feel more comfortable when the class actually start because we've already went in and start talking to each other. So that's just some of the strategies and I will open it up to someone else. 
Yeah, well, sure as well. I mean, I think similarly, um, I really take time at the beginning in terms of just organizing my syllabus to come across in a way that shows that I'm, I really am welcoming them to the class and care about them and um, their success um, and am accessible and am there for their support. Um, usually like with my first module is like a getting started, kind of just orienting them to Canvas and how to navigate my class. Um, and then just doing kind of check-ins, right? And so those check-ins might be in the announcements throughout the semester to just let students know that they can reach me and reminding them how they can reach me. Um, yeah, so just kind of initiating that, that contact and openness for them to reach out. Um, I'll go next. Uh, so some of my strategies kind of a lot, lot, lot what Queen's saying too. I have been, I do, because of Zoom, I do a little welcome recording that I put up on my announcements. I've been using my announcements much more than I ever have in the past. Um, so it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for them to get to know me. I actually was on campus for, to pick something up off my desktop and uh, I videotaped my office. So I put that up there so they can see like, this is where you would be if you were meeting with me. So, um, cause I have a, so many freshmen. I have so many first year students right now. They've never even been on Santa Monica College's campus. So it's continuing to try to make it like as no normalizing it as much as possible, even though it's not normal, right? Um, the other th strategy I've taken with them is I really encourage my students around exercise, even though I'm a career counselor. Um, but I'm noticing that people are not moving. They're, they're sitting, we're, we're all this, and you guys can see I'm standing. I finally asked my manager for a stand up desk. And, you know, I just said, you know, figure out what works for you and get some exercise every day, whatever you're comfortable with from a safety perspective, but please, please get some exercise. And they, you know, they all, and then they have to share with each other and they do breakout rooms. Um, and then the breakout rooms are definitely, I think we were all using those as an opportunity. And yeah, and then just, I'm gonna just go back to the announcements really quickly. Uh, I know that sounds, this sounds too easy, but really taking that time to put the bulletins from the school on there. Um, we do cool career panels with professionals, giving extra credit if you go to a club um, and really kind of adjusting them, making sure that I'm feeding them, that the college is still moving forward with, um, with all these activities and internships and um, opportunities to be engaged. And the last thing I wanna say is, is I also, as an instructor, um, there was a student, anyways, um, no, there's a counselor. I used to really hold them to the, to the deadline of assignments. I've now pretty much opened up my canvas till the end of the semester for them. And, and it's just, it was, it was actually a, a mentee of mine who said, Jenna, that you just need to be flexible and compassionate. And, and I'm a very compassionate person, but she goes, you need to understand that the students are struggling and, you know, Anyway, so it was, uh, I've opened up my canvas till the end of, for assignments till the end of the semester. But there is a final deadline, December 16th at midnight, you know, that's it. <laughs> Anyways, all right, Justin. I'll share a few strategies, but, uh, and I want you all to walk away with something too, but something you could do with your class even next semester is, uh, I had students do a show and tell, and I basically said, go grab something in your space, anything, and, um, and imagine you would put it in a time capsule that would remind you of 2020. And it was a way for me to try to get creative, to get students um, to turn on their video to show something. And if they didn't show it, they would send me a picture or provide a picture or a video or something. But most students would turn on their video and we kind of had fun with it. Like, let's show this item and this reminds me of 2020. You can imagine it got, a lot of students got creative. Um, but just something like that and something else I wanted to share with you all that you probably can do too is early on I had students in a discussion board we were talking about like emotional health and wellness and stress and I told students to share a, to share a song that uplifts their spirits and then I created a playlist so I called it um the Puente Cycle 26 playlist and uh and then I sent the playlist to the entire class. So now we kind of have like our own CD uh, and uh, our own record kind of thing. And uh, they really enjoyed it. Uh, and we all got to see the songs that we all like. And then what I did is when class would start, 
when, as they're coming on to Zoom, I would have, I would play a song that a student had, I would play a song from the playlist. And so I felt like students would probably look forward to like, I wonder if my song comes on today. And I made sure all 31 students were covered. So um, something that you could walk away with, you know, something tangible you could do in your class. Thank you, Justin. Yeah, Queen, um, did you have anything else to add for us? I just wanted to add one additional thing. And I, and I guess it's a strategy. It's a great strategy. I, in my mind, it is. It's that our staff development on our campus do a really, really great job of getting people certified to teach online. And they have some awesome things. So I'm pretty sure that your staff development on your campus is doing the same thing. But I also want to advocate for At One. They have some really awesome um, how to teach online, how to engage students, how to keep students uh, equity-minded environments, how to create those, how to create equity-minded syllabi and all those kind of things. So I will certainly say take advantage of staff development opportunities as a strategy to help improve and um, expand or enhance your class. Thank you for that. Any any other things to add to this? No, um, I can add oh. that, um, you know, like having a non-graded discussion board for just talking about what's going on right now and um, has been really helpful to students to just kind of know that they have a space where they can connect with each other on, on the craziness of 2020. Um, I think that's what I've heard some students say is that they'd like that. Thanks. Um, the other thing I've heard, I actually, I, I was on, I had students all morning this morning, and one of them actually told me, she goes, Jenna, you're one of the few professors, uh, and I do, I, I, I kind of just really, I, I, I try to instruct my students, and I know they're all in different environments, but I do kind of talk about when you're on camera, you move to the front of the screen, and um, you know, you're, you, then your professor will get to know you. They get to see you nodding and they see that you're not maybe gaming or you're on your phone or, you know, and, and that you are literally there listening to them and attentive to them. So that's, there's a little bit of training I do with that. And I, I don't require, I don't take away points if they're not on screen, but I think it's really about just educating them as to what happens when they're on screen and what is it like, how, you know, for, for us as instructors, what it's like. I think there's a, there's a nice compassionate way to do it in, 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 in a, like a career education way. So that's one thing. And then my student today said, you know, Jenna, you're like one of my few instructors because we all have our names now. We don't have to remember their names in a classroom unless we do name tags. So mm -hmm. they're like, she's like, thank you for always, you always call us out by name. You know, Sadie, that was a great comment you just made. You know, Heather, I love your facilitation today. And so there's something about the naming. Rome's like, her name's Rome. Um, she's just like, it is fantastic to be to be noticed. So anyways, that's my last tip. <laughs> it's, and it's so easy. It's just so easy. It's so simple. Thanks, Jenna. Uh, I think we have about five minutes left in this section. So I wanted to ask Christine if there are any questions that have emerged in the chat for the group. Yes, here's kind of a long one. It says, what are some ideas when creating student groups that have worked for you this semester? Do you connect with students outside of class? If so, how? I have one. I have one I could quickly share, but um, I have tried to get creative in a discussion or when I put students in breakout rooms, I sometimes purposely put them in a specific group and I'll tell the students as they're talking to try to figure out why did I put them in that specific group. For example, early on, I put everyone who had sort of the same birthday month, I kind of put them in a, in a group. And, I, and so what, it, it made it fun for them to try to figure out like, why are we, what do we all have in common? And so it, it got them to really talk and to engage and then eventually they'll come back to the main room and they'll say something like, oh, we're, we were all born in March or something. So, and I would do things like that so that each class, they're like looking forward to like solving a puzzle kind of thing. Um, just something to think about. Anybody else have anything to share? Okay. I have a, a, another question. Um, 
I'm really glad that the syllabus, you know, our syllabus and how important our syllabus is in our classes and in welcoming our students to our classes has been mentioned. And I'm really curious, um, I know many of you have been teaching online for a while. This was not your first rodeo, of course, but how did your syllabus change, if at all, when you had to go to online or just during this whole pandemic? Um, did, did anything change with your syllabus? And if so, how? I don't know if it's changed, yeah. but I did something new this last time is I added videos actually in my syllabus. <laughs> so uh, I put a welcome video in my syllabus that I created. Um, and periodically when they would click on any assignment that was in the syllabus, it, I, it'll just be me for a few seconds explaining and talking about it, giving like a little overview. And that was a lot of extra work to try to do all that, but I was just trying to do things to engage students, to make it students want to, you know, oh, I wonder what's happening the next week or something like that. So, yeah. That's great. Yeah, Justin. Yeah, uh, to echo uh, what Dr. Qu Queen said, um, I did, you know, welcome video, but also if you're using Canvas, when students submit assignments, you could do a video comment and so instead of writing comments and just awarding points, I would record a video saying, you know, I read your paper, you know, thanks for sharing this with me and just um, provide feedback. And they really appreciated that because it felt more personable. Um, I also wrote down that sometimes the framework you or the state of mind you create for the class is, is key. And for me, um, I really, like, I, I emphasize that my class is a lab for how to do things in your other classes. And what I mean by that is, I, I, you're gonna, if you make mistakes in my class, I encourage it because we need to learn how to approach and how to model what we need to do in your other classes. So I had tailored assignments such as, you know, you, you've missed a quiz. Like, how would you send your professor an email just so that they're getting that I call it the hidden curriculum. These are sometimes things you're not really taught. You kind of learn on the fly. But as, as a counselor, I want to teach this in my student success class so that they're more prepared. And I think they really appreciate it approaching my class as a lab where they can make mistakes. So they learn and then just model, you know, how should we... So in terms of my syllabus, if you send me an email and say, I, I forgot and you're honest and you're genuine, I'll open it back up because I want you to learn, you know, what the quiz is wanting to reinforce, but I'll model this other instructor may not be that flexible. So how should we approach it and how should we be careful? How should we know what's the, when's the deadline? And um, I think that part is, is crucial. Thank you. I, I want to invite our students um, who are with us. Um, did you hear anything that, that you liked or anything that you want to comment on or that you can share with us? Any reflections you may have after listening to our panelists? Not to put you all on the spot, but just to invite you to chime in. Um, so I really like what Justin um, is doing for his class. Um, on how um, he said that he adds, like he, he um, sorry, um, he encourages students to put a certain picture um, for their Zoom meeting like that. That actually goes a long way for me because it, it just shows that like your professor is encouraging you to in a way participate in the class even if they can't see your face. And I also like the music playlist because personally I, <laughs> I would love to go to class and be able to hear what like the song that I chose to be on the playlist. So it's just like that, it, that's really nice to hear that he's actually, not, not, not to say that not, not like all the counselors are going that extra mile because everyone is like encouraging students to do their best in the class, but I feel like he's a professor that really goes the extra mile to encourage their students and participate in, in the class. And to me, that goes a long way. And it just shows that you're really caring towards their students. Nice. Uh, in the music thing that I did something different than Justin, but it was, it's, it's, I just, for extra credit, I had the students create their own playlist and it was really cool. 
So, um, and then they would submit it to me. They would screenshot it and they loved, they loved it because music is, music brings emotion and it had to be their joy. I call it their joy playlist. So, yeah. Great. Juliana or Sarah, did you have anything else to add? You don't have to. Um, we can move. Um, if you do, feel free to jump in. Um, we're going to move to the question and answer um, for our participants to be able to ask any questions or, or Christina, if any questions have come up in the chat that you want to pose to our panelists. Yeah, so we do have one. Um, it says for asynchronous classes, what are your suggestions for pre-record lectures? <laughs> As you guys know, I teach synchronous, so <laughs> there goes Queen. Take it home, Queen. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I don't have any suggestions really, but um, I just, uh, I record all of my lectures. All of my lectures are recorded. I find a quiet place and um, whatever my topic is or whatever the content is, I just find a quiet place and I start talking just like if I was right in front of the class and, and it is there. So every week in the module, there is a recorded lecture. I think the, um, the, 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 uh, the, the issue with that is you gotta make sure that it's closed caption. So mm -hmm. you, you have to have either a Captasia or you have to have some kind of program that does it or you can do it and then put it into YouTube and then have it closed caption in there and then put it and then take it from there and put it back into your classroom and back into your module. So that's the, that's the thing you have to be careful. It has to be closed caption, um, that type of thing. And um, it can't be any crazy things flashing or anything like that. Um, so, but other than that, it, it's, it's fun uh, to, to do that. And um, the students seem to, to enjoy it. And um, yeah. So Queen, there was a question coming in when you were talking about what programs you use and you just sort of intuitively answered that. Oh. <laughs> uh, but Justin also chimed in the chat. I saw he said there's a screen, what is it called, Justin? Screencast a meter or something? Screen, uh -huh. Screencast Omatic and it's free. Um, and it just, it'll screen, it could um, screen record. And so you, you could be on it or it could record your screen. And something you could do as counselors is uh, I've created like a YouTube channel so that when students are asking questions that sometimes takes a lot of time to email back, like how do I, how do I withdraw from a course? How do I submit a pass, no pass form? I created a YouTube channel that just has all those videos so that if I get that question, I could just send the video and it walks through exactly how to do it. Um, so th that's the website that I use uh, to, to screen record. Thank you. Christina, any other questions coming in the chat? Yes. What type and or topics for group counseling sessions for students are counsel counselors offering through Zoom? So um, what topics are they offering through Zoom? Types or topics of group counseling sessions. So I'll, I'll jump. So in the Career Center at Santa Monica College, and I'll, and I'll put it in the chat as soon as I'm done talking, but we basically took all of our student services, um, student success workshops, and have put them on Zoom. Um, and we create the Zoom link. And then um, we have 10 career counselors at SMC. We're very fortunate. I'm the only full time. So we have nine adjunct. We are so fortunate. And so we do job search, LinkedIn, um, just choosing a major, everything that you would imagine is career related, right? Um, and then what we did is we pre-recorded them back in the summer and then we uploaded them onto a YouTube channel as well. So I'll put the, the SMC Career Services Center, but um, we just, we have it and, and it's posted on the SMC calendar. Uh, we also have a student um, success calendar for our academic and our mental health. So it's kind of like all of the student services components go onto this one calendar. Um, and we refer the students to it Oh, like all the time, just every single, a lot. So that's what we did, so. Yeah, for first year experience, um, we, you know, did um, like a stress management workshop and so recorded it and then created um, a module within Canvas and then put the resources. So in addition to the actual workshop 
um, in the video, there were actual resources or crisis hotlines that students can have access to. I, um, I saw a, a comment from our student Sarah in the chat and I just wanted to read it. Um, she said, I think the welcome message, the welcome messages are very valuable. The pictures, video messages, music would enhance community. Also, I really like the idea of safe space, office hours where students can hang out and talk with their professors and with each other. So thank you for that comment, Sarah. Any other questions, Christina, that have been popping up? One general theme that pops up is um, everyone's really interested in knowing more ideas or tools or platforms that allow engagement. Um, things such as for group discussions, how to engage students when the cameras are off. And I know some of you touched upon that, but maybe there's additional ideas that weren't touched previously. So it sounds like one of the questions is outside of Canvas and maybe the things that have been uh, what can you do outside of Canvas? What are the tools outside of Canvas? Is that kind of yeah. anybody? I, mean, I, I think I one of the things that you could do is you should probably be able to reach out to your um, your distant ed people to see what they have already on campus. I know we have this other really cool tool. It's called Studio. And you go in, you make your videos there. It's, you know, it's provided by the school. You make your videos, it closed caption. It does everything for you. Right? And so see what your, what your campus have to offer because they may have some really cool technology um, out there, so. I was just gonna quickly share that, you know, sometimes um, instead of doing like a PowerPoint about, let's say you're covering general education and transfer requirements. Um, what I've done is I'll, I'll convert what I'm going to talk about into a Kahoot, a Kahoot game. And so if you, use, if you haven't used Kahoot, it allows students to use a different, uh, you just need a phone or you could use your computer. And then it basically allows you to, uh, you put the question and then you get to see who answers it correctly. It creates kind of a friendly competition, but at the same time they're learning. So if I'm asking them like, what's the maximum amount of units you can transfer into a UC? And then I'll put the numbers and we, the number is 70, the maximum. And then if they get it wrong, then that's, that's a teachable moment. You know, the minimum is 60, the maximum is 70. So we're basically playing a game instead of just doing straight lecture format. And so I think they've really enjoyed uh, the Kahoot games because they get to actively participate. Thank you. Um, we're actually going to model one of those in just a second with Mentimeter. Um, I just wanted to um, sort of, uh, what do you call that, foreshadow that later on um, we're going to be sending, uh, giving you a link and there's going to be a resource list. So a lot of our panelists already have provided um, links and information on the resource list about some of these tools that they're using. Um, thank you all so much for the rich conversation. I believe we're going to move to the next thing. If we could get to the next slide, thank you. And so we're gonna do a Mentimeter. So just modeling, just modeling um, the Mentimeter. Christina has put it in the link. We'll get to the right slide in a second. Um, in the chat, there's the Mentimeter link. We have to go, the, uh, yeah, keep, keep going. There we go. All right, so you can either go to menti.com and enter this code in, or you can click the link in the chat. We're gonna give you all a few minutes. Um, there's two questions in the Mentimeter today. Um, and so you'll get each question once you answer it, it'll go to the next one. Um, the first question is describe today, right? Our session today in one word. And the second question is what questions do you still have about teaching and engaging students in a virtual reality? So Christina will put up the answers as they come in. This is an example of using a word cloud. And I believe with this, typically with the word cloud, the more people say the same word, it gets bigger, right? Yes, correct. It's kind of fun to uh, to see what everybody's thinking today, what their one word is. Um, seems like 
A lot of people have felt that this has been very informative and helpful. Our, our panelists, and, and including our students and our counseling practitioners have just given us so much great information. And I feel just inspired um, by the creative ideas I heard today. So just kind of give it a few minutes for, for folks to participate. It's always hard with that awkward silence. I'm good at just running my mouth the whole time. I love that practitioner love. Yes. So great. Feeling connected, helpful, enlightening, productive, validating. I love that. So you can kind of see insightful. So a lot of great uh, words to describe our session today. Hopefully you've all been able to get started on the second question. So Christina, whenever you're ready, if you wanna move to the second one. And the way that, um, so the first one, if you set up Mentimeter, it shows up as a word cloud. And this particular question in the Menti is show, I believe it's, um, Christina, what's, what's this setting? This setting is a open-ended question as well as a rolling answers, which means as people respond and you have more answers, the screen will roll by itself and show their responses. Thank you. So what questions do you still have about teaching and engaging students in a virtual reality? So some great comments coming through. Um, how are you dealing with self-care so not to burn out? Best ways to keep students engaged. How do you encourage students to speak in Zoom? I'm looking to transition into counseling, but also want to teach counseling courses. How do I go about getting some teaching experience outside of grad school hours? Great question. And I'm so glad we have some grad students with us today. I did not have an opportunity like this when I was in grad school, but then again, that was a long time ago and all the social media didn't really exist back then. So I'm really happy you're here. Um, a lot of online events. Um, do you feel that it's too many events? So those are some questions. Also, Christina is continuing to nudge us, and I appreciate your presence today, Christina. Just if there are other things you want to add into the chat, that's another great place to put your questions and comments. We are looking at the whole chat and all the questions, um, and I believe we'll be sending out this recording and this presentation for you all to have, and you'll be able to look back on the comments and questions. Another question, how to increase student participation level um, throughout the semester? So as people answer, the mentee will begin to see more and more of the questions populating in. And just as a side note, Heather, um, this will be open for all today. So if anyone feels like they wanna go back and add anything to it, you can use the same link or if you use the code, um, which shows up at the top of my screen, you can do that as well, whichever you are more comfortable with. Or even once the session's over, you can, if it stays open on your screen, you can continue to type away. Thank you. And then really quick question. We're about to move on and close out, but qu quickly, Christina, are we also sending out the, the slides from the mentee to everybody when we send the presentation? I believe we send out highlights of the mentee meter. Um, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it um, back over to Luis. Thank you so much for having me today and just for everybody being here. Thank you so much, Heather. This was wonderful and great exchange with the panel and especially having the students with us throughout. Thank you students for staying the whole time with us. We really appreciate your input and listening to what your counselors in some cases and counselors across the state are doing and wanting to learn more. As you could hear the excitement in the voices and in their faces um, about why this uh, practitioner love is so good to share. I'll admit that I added that one, Heather. <laughs> Um, I do want to say that we are um, looking forward to sharing a wonderful resource toolkit that um, I'm, I'm sure that we'll take a lot of the ideas that were in the chat and we'll load them up to the toolkit so that way they could all be in one place. Uh, so we'll work hard to trying to translate those. I did add a few ones that a few couple of uh, New York Times article and another one about Zoom meetings and Zoom fatigue, um, that seems to be a, a need. So we look forward to um, sharing all of this with you in, in, the, in the toolkit. The other announcement that we wanted to make, we're, we're quickly uh, approaching uh, more information that will be coming out shortly. We've been sharing this save the date 
uh, for basically a whole month worth of uh, sessions, a four part series put on by Dr. Stewart from uh, San Diego um, Miracosta College and a wonderful group of counselors that she's been working with to develop a equity grounded counseling uh, serving black students. And so CLP is partnering with her and her colleagues and more information will be out shortly about those signing up for them and, and making sure that we reserve a spot for you or you reserve a spot for yourself. Um, we'll, we'll let you know how big, we're not sure how big it's gonna be yet, but if you're interested, uh, make sure you jot down those dates and let us know if you are so that we'd be sure to let you know the next information. Next slide, please. This is the coming back to the calendar series of the round table. As you um, all may know that we are con continuing with these and we will have uh, the next round table, February 26th. And the title of that is Partnerships to Reach and Motivate New Community College Students. So some of these overlap and in some ways they build on each other. And so we're hoping that you'll jot this date down and put it in your calendar. Uh, if you've already registered, then you should have the link to it. Um, looking forward to folks joining us then as well. And we'll wrap up in April, uh, the following uh, couple of months. Next slide, please. We want to again uh, remind you to please join us on the uh, Basecamp group, uh, Community of Practice. We hope this has all been beneficial for you. We, we certainly benefit from the community growing and all of you sharing. And so please uh, follow the opt-in uh, link that Christina put in the chat. And if for some reason you're having difficulty, please let us know. We look forward to all of you joining us, especially those that are trying to get into the counseling world uh, and community colleges. Um, we love to partner and find out ways that we can work together to support new counselors coming on board. We certainly, th these times have shown us, we really do need uh, counselors that are engaged and are supportive and are responding to the need out there in the community. Thank you, next slide. We want to just wrap up by saying thank you and we hope you have a safe and happy holidays that you enjoy and get rejuvenated for your break. We certainly all need it. It's been a very challenging year. We look forward to coming back next year to continue these series and other activities that CACN or CLP will be putting on uh, for your, um, hopefully your benefit from what you all uh, have learned today and hopefully in the future. Thank you all. Have a great holiday, everybody. Stay safe, wear a mask. Thank you. All right. <laughs>